Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Christy, released in the year 2014. The movie begins with a hooded man taking pictures of a young woman who has been brutally murdered in an empty field. A media report reveals that the young woman is a 21-year-old student named Heather Price that went missing three days ago after leaving a friend's house in Mills Fall. A video montage then shows internet screenshots and videos of women being killed in ritual murders by a cyber cult. The cult encourages its members to kill Christy, a name of Latin origin that means follower of God. They believe that if you kill Christy, you kill God. Afterwards, the footage of the murders is uploaded on an anonymous underground website. The movie then cuts to a college student named Justine Wills, who is attending a private university in the northeastern United States. She is reading poetry to her boyfriend Aaron in her dorm room, which she shares with fellow student Nicole. She's on financial aid, so she always has to study hard to keep her grades high to keep her academic scholarship. It's Thanksgiving week and most students are flying back home. However, Justine has decided to stay back to study for her upcoming tests and to save money by not flying during the holidays. She asks Aaron to stay with her, but he says he has to go back home due to his overbearing family. As a result, Justine is left alone to spend the holiday on a nearly empty college campus with her roommate Nicole, security guard Wayne, front gate worker Dave, and groundskeeper Scott. Later that evening, Nicole reveals that her father has surprised her family with a trip and she has to go. Seeing Justine upset, Nicole invites Justine to join her, but the latter declines the offer. However, Nicole convinces Justine to keep her BMW for the weekend. On Thanksgiving Day, Justine spends her day swimming and studying in the library. By evening, she gets bored, so she decides to take Nicole's BMW for a spin. After informing Wayne and front gate worker Dave, she drives to a nearby convenience store. On her way there, she listens to the news about Heather Price on the radio. At the store, she meets a creepy-looking hooded girl with lip piercings. She is Violet, and she compliments Nicole's BMW. She creepily tries to touch Justine's face while complimenting her, but the latter ducks and goes to the counter to pay for her goods. Violet follows her to the counter and asks the cashier for a student discount on a pair of sunglasses. However, she fails to produce a student ID and the cashier declines the request. This agitates her and to defuse the situation, Justine offers to pay for the sunglasses. But Violet rudely tells her that she doesn't want anything from her. Taken aback, Justine says out loud that it's the shit she gets for trying to help someone out. Violet slams the money on the counter and says that Justine doesn't know what shit is, addressing her as Christy for some reason. Justine is weirded out by the experience and she heads back to her home. On her way there, she has a brief encounter with the deranged woman. After returning back to the dorm, she talks to Aaron to calm herself down. He feels guilty for leaving her alone when he learns that Nicole left her to meet her family. Aaron offers to return and keep her company. Justine tries to convince him against it, but he refuses to leave her alone and leaves for the campus. Justine falls asleep talking to Aaron in the TV room. When she wakes up, she finds the dorm eerily silent. She ventures out into the hall, calling out for Wayne. However, she fails to find him and ends up getting frightened by the lightning outside and the defective dorm lights. Justine suddenly hears loud screaming noises coming from her room. It turns out to be her laptop streaming a creepy video. The laptop suddenly disconnects from the internet and she notices Wayne outside. She calls out for him from her window but fails to attract his attention. She turns her focus back to her laptop which starts getting bombarded by the letter K. Moreover, when she turns around, she notices a hooded figure. It turns out to be Violet who has appeared in the room with a box cutter knife. Violet again calls her Christy and gives her a creepy compliment about her room and boyfriend. Violet further notes that Justine has got it all before smashing her photo frame on the ground in anger. Scared, Justine flees. She tries to run out but she finds herself locked in the dorm. She heads for the secondary exit but she notices a masked man approaching her. Left with no choice, she hides behind the reception counter and tries to contact the police. 
However, the power goes out and she starts hearing scary thudding noises. After a moment of brief silence, she notices Wayne outside the main door, trying to gain entry into the dorm. Justine tries to help him in, but the masked man appears behind Wayne and murders him in front of her. Another masked man then appears inside the dorm and carves a large K on the wall. Scared, Justine tries to flee, but Violet appears and blocks her path. Violet tells her that the hunt has begun and asks her to run to God before releasing her. Scared, Justine runs for her life, but at the end of the hallway, she comes across another masked man. Trapped, she locks herself in her room. However, the masked assailants try to force their way into the room, so she escapes through the window. Outside, she finds Nicole's BMW vandalized. The four cult killers, which includes Violet and three other men wearing blue, black, and gray hoodies, start chasing her, and she is forced to hide in the college canteen. The killers follow her into the canteen and start frantically looking for her. Using her wit, she manages to trick the killers and quietly sneak outside. She runs to the campus's stadium, where she finds Dave murdered in his car. Frightened, she runs back outside to look for a phone, but she ends up running into one of the killers. She again bolts and heads for Scott's house. She frantically bangs on his door, asking for help. Scott is still alive and he takes her in. Justine explains the situation to him and asks him to fetch his cell phone. However, Scott returns with a shotgun and ventures outside to confront the killers. He isn't able to see anything due to the mist, and his dog Titus follows him outside and gets lost. Moments later, Scott and Justine hear the poor dog screaming in pain. Scott tries to look for the dog, but only to find its bloody belt. Scott returns back to the house and tells Justine to grab the phone from the drawer. As Justine calls the police, Scott goes out again to confront one of the killers running past the house. However, as soon as he exits the house, he is dragged away by the killers. Justine nervously walks outside and sees the killers hanging Scott to death from a swing set in the yard. Violet tries to approach her, but she manages to run away. Justine's 911 call finally connects and she informs the operator about her situation as she runs. After safely hiding in the library, she updates the operator about her whereabouts. However, it is then revealed that Violet and her cult have hacked the call and Justine was talking to Violet all along. Now aware about Justine's location, the cult members head to the library. Justine then receives videos and images of herself that Violet and her gang recorded. The message ends with a warning that they will hunt her. Justine and the cult then play hide and seek in the library. She almost gets caught but manages to throw them off with Scott's cell phone. As they're distracted, Justine runs to the roof but the group soon corner her on the terrace. Violet begins recording Justine again and asks her to smile, addressing her as Christy. A broken down Justine tells them that she is not Christy but Violet insists that Justine is Christy because she has pretty hair and a pretty car. When one of the killers corners her on the roof and proceeds to stab her, Justine jumps off the building. Fortunately, she falls through the branches of a tree that help break her fall. She survives the fall and heads for the campus gate, but she is forced to return back when she notices Aaron arriving on the campus to check on her. She calls for him, but he drives past her without noticing. Aaron notices Violet running into a building and follows her inside, mistaking her for Justine. Justine also arrives and asks Aaron to get away from Violet. Before Aaron could reunite with Justine, one of the cult members appears and stabs him to death. Justine quickly gets in Aaron's car and proceeds to flee. One of the cult members jumps on the car, but Justine pins the maniac against the wall and crushes him to death. Justine then abandons the car and runs for the college's fitness center. She hides in the indoor swimming pool, and when one of the cult members follows her in and gets close to her, she gets into the pool to hide. Justine then attacks the cult member from behind with her car keys and drowns him. Justine then arms herself with the cult member's baseball bat and modifies it into a lethal weapon. The third masked killer soon arrives and notices his fallen friend in the swimming pool. Armed with a knife, the assailant looks for Justine in the bathroom. 
Justine tricks the killer with a recording of herself and attacks him from behind with the baseball bat. With just one good strike, Justine neutralizes the cult member and unmasks him. She breathes a sigh of relief until she reads a text on the dead member's phone. It is from Violet, asking if he has killed Christy yet. Justine responds, yes, and finds photos of the cult's other victims from all over the U.S., with their declaration to kill the Christies of the world, pure, beautiful, and privileged women who they believe follow God. Determined to avenge Aaron and several other innocent women's deaths, Justine uses pool chemicals to create a flammable powder and dresses herself in the dead man's mask and jacket. She approaches the car and unloads the flammable powder on Violet. She then informs Violet that her friends are dead. Enraged, Violet tries to attack her, but Justine douses her with a liquid. The powder and liquid cause a fire, and Justine watches as Violet burns alive. Justine then photographs Violet's corpse with the cell phone and uploads it to the website. A montage at the end reveals that a series of similar cult murders have occurred in other states and cities, but with Justine's testimony and access to the phone, many of the cult's members have been arrested. In the end scene, a young woman is seen being attacked by another cult killer outside her home, but the attacker is stopped by another masked individual, seemingly Justine. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.